Three ewes gone up here. Two one absolutely fell. Well, where do you think they've gone? Well, they're not much for packing their bags. They know their patch. We've had some bad weather. I'll lose a few that way when winter uh... sets in. But I'll still find the dead ones. This is five ewes vanished into thin air. Rustlers? I don't know. I found most of them an absolute bottom. All bracken and bog. It took me half the morning to bring them back up. It's not somewhere they'd be if they'd not been for it. Dogs, then? Maybe. You best come back to the farm with me. Have a you injured and another with a broken leg I've had to put down. I walk along the city streets you used to walk along with me And every step I take recalls how much in love we used to be Oh, how can I forget you When there is always something there to remind me Always something there to remind me And I will never be free You'll always be a part of me oh, 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 oh. When shadows fall I pass a small cafe Where we would dance at night And I can't help recalling How it felt to kiss and hold you tight Oh, how can I forget you When there is always something there to remind Hello. Are you very ill? I don't think so. Oh, I am. I've got chicken pox. No, you haven't. I made your chicken pox better. You have measles now. Jennifer, Susan, what are you doing? Oh, Kate. Hello. I wasn't expecting you to... Well, come in. You two, upstairs now. Sorry, I didn't hear the bell. Don't worry. Come through. Not ill. No, Mrs. Rowan's a doctor too. She doesn't look like a doctor. I said upstairs. I want to show Dr. Rowan round the surgery. If you'd wait in here. Kate, I'm very glad you've decided to join me. They look fragile, but it takes a lot to get a sheep to break a leg. Must have been running like there were no tomorrow. You'll 
see she's a gash on her shoulder. There's a few things could have done it, especially if she were in a panic. A bit of barbed wire, or well, there's a vicious stretch of rock going down from Apsley Fell. And if she were running hell for leather... Richard! Hey, steady down, you two. <laughs> could a dog have done that? Not to be a ruddy big un. Come on, open up, it's me. Where have you been, you dirty stop out? Come on, get inside, get in, get to bed. This is a social cause. I'm trying to do you a favour, if that's what you mean. Mind your head. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I saw a pig coming into land. Oh, very good, Claude. Now listen. I don't know how many letters you've had from the tax man, but they mean what they say. There's a bailiff coming here on Wednesday. Now, I'm down to come with him, make sure he gets in. They're wasting their time. I've got no worth ticket. I'm not surprised at you. It's what you're supposed to protect people, not persecute them. They're coming on Wednesday, Claude, rain or shine. Now, you'd make life a lot easier for yourself if you got this sorted out, all right? This is Christine's domain. Your receptionist. Without whom? If I tell you quite how much I rely on her, you might think she's a better bet for a partner. But you know how it is. I wish I did. I'm working without a receptionist at the moment. I don't believe that's possible. It isn't. So, usual sort of stuff. Patient's records, paperwork, more paperwork and more. And then... The surgery. As I say, just one at the moment. It's a far cry from what I've got in Aidan's field. Good. So, if you want to mooch about on your own, open a few cupboards, see what a mess it really is. Would you mind if I stayed for some of your evening surgery? I'd really like to see... What sort of a doctor I am? No, of course not. I just want to get a feel of the practice. Good idea. In fact, why don't you see the first few patients on your own? I... It'll give me a chance to read the girls a bedtime story right through. Last night we left Aslan tied up on the stone table. Very uncomfortable. Doctor. Christine, this is Kate Rowan. Kate, Christine Ferguson, who can tell you everything about everyone who comes in here. Nice to meet you, Dr. Rowan. Call me Kate. Well, I'm sure you two are going to get on famously. Uh, Kate's going to stay and take the first few patients while I read the children a bedtime story. I'll be back when I've sorted out Aslan and the Wicked Queen. I didn't intend to muscle in, but I suppose it's one way to start. I'll get you a coat, Dr. Rowan. Honestly, call me Kate. The patients feel happier with a little formality, Doctor. Then they know who's who. So, we've a report of sheep missing from a farm above Bridesdale. Here. Then sheep savaged by a dog or dogs above Sultan. And now, Aidensfield. So, 
do we have a pattern? Were there any carcasses at Salton? One dead ewe, two never found. Well, one of the local farmers, Phil Cunningham, thinks it smells like rustling. Yes. While his sheep were badly frightened, they'd run halfway to Aidan's field. And? Well, one of them had a, a nasty gash. Could have been attacked by a dog or something pretty big. Exactly. Big. Or maybe more than one dog. A pack of dogs would have been seen. Precisely. You see, that's not what the pattern is telling us. Well, I don't us. know about a pattern, sir. We're looking into a number of incidents, but we're not in a position to relate them. Sheep being savaged doesn't tie up with sheep disappearing. Unless, of course, something's killing the sheep for food. The way a leopard pulls a wildebeest up into a tree. A leopard, sir. You may not be aware that a number of irresponsible individuals have released large cats into the wild. You see, they get them as pets and then they can't cope. In one case, a puma was tracked and shot in Surrey after having lived off local livestock and pets for several months. Well, that's very interesting, sir. But I think we're better off looking at the more obvious... I am aware that rural policing is struggling with any concept not concurrent with the horse-drawn plough, Sergeant Blaketon. But if you look, you'll see clear parallels with the Surrey case. I also have to tell you that a neighbour of Mr Appleton's, I interviewed her myself, saw a very large, pale, cat-like animal close to Appleton's fields on the night in question. Well, I'm sure we'll find this information very useful, sir. Won't you, Rowan? Get back in! Get back in! What's the matter with you? <laughs> Don't look at me like that. You'll be glad enough to eat the biscuits. <laughs> Shut up. Temperature. Oh, it's a bit of flow, that's all. I wouldn't bother you about this pain, I'd be. Look at your arms in front of you. Now turn them round. Does it hurt now? It aches a bit. It's up in my leg and all. You can put your shirt back on. This should help. There is some flu about at the moment, so that's probably what's causing the muscular pain. Stay indoors until your temperature comes down and drink plenty of liquids. But if the pain persists, come back, all right? Oh, this will do the trick. Ta. Bye. Could I have the notes for the next patient, please? That was the last one, Doctor. I thought there were a few more. They were expecting to see Dr. Radcliffe. They didn't seem too keen, so I thought it best not to push. Obviously, it'll be different when you've settled in properly. Alfred, come here. What's the matter with you? 
Oh, it's daft. I mean, there's enough can happen to a sheep without inventing monsters. Well, that's what we've been told to look for. That or anything odd. Well, the only thing odd tonight's Claude. Happy as a sandboy. He reckons he's got the tax man off his back. Right, I'll, I'll see you then. Hey, don't forget, don't be late on Wednesday, Constable. Come here. See what I mean? George. Same again, please, Gina. Hey, there was a story just like that about a panther in the Twilight Zone. Of course, it came from another dimension. Alfred! Come here! Come here, you daft apus! Alfred! Oh, was it? No. I've never seen a U maul this bad. Whatever it is, it's powerful. Alfred! Alfred! Off that. I got a big fat mama trying to break me. And love to live so pleasantly. Live this life of luxury. Blazing on a sunny afternoon. In summertime. I don't know what to think now. I feel a bit daft driving around with tales of the beast of the ruddy moors. So you're not sure? Oh, we're going to have to warn people. I'll get over to Ashfully and sort things out at our end. Ah, we can't take chances. Jane and Richard are out. Where are they? They just went off. Towards Apsley Woods, I think. You know what they're like. They wander all over. Well, they're not in any danger, are they? Well, we'd best get them in by the house. I'll go and have a look. Yeah, I'll come with you. Richard? 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 Richard, I'm here. It's me. Come on. Only me. Got ya. Richard, you pig. I knew it was you. Yeah, but I still got ya. What was that? Let's see. All right. Right, a few 
you two, you take the track. I'll go this way. I'll see you up the top. Fine. They'll pop out of nowhere. Richard! Dad looking for you two. Come on, let's get back. There were dead sheep and all. And another one running off. Kate, that thing you saw run across the road last night. It was just a movement. Out of the corner of my eye. Not one of the sheep. No, definitely not. You don't think Crossy's right, do you? No, not really. I'm reliably informed it happens all the time in the twilight zone. Are you going to even the score today, then? What? Your receptionist. She doesn't know what she's taken on. No, thanks. I think I can fit in a few home visits for James before I go back. What have we got? Well, there's only two, really. There's, um, Mrs Sullivan. Baby's had whooping cough. It's pretty much cleared up, but you know how the cough lingers. Mm -hmm. She's still a bit worried. And Mrs Dolby. Four months pregnant, she slipped a disc. Have you got the notes? Yes. Was this morning a normal surgery? Fairly quiet. Quieter than my morning surgeries in Aidensfield. And I've got a quarter of the patients. Oh, I think Dr Radcliffe has them all well trained. They certainly don't waste our time. I'll drop these in on my way home. Thanks. Mr Greengrass, you can't just leave this here. Can't I? I've already done it. But it's completely irregular. Besides, it's not enough. Isn't it? Well, you better come outside and get the rest then. <laughs> He's not one out yet, but he's like me. He's a lovely movie. You want to put him into training? We cannot accept payment in this fashion, and we certainly can't accept payment in kind. Hey, cup old. Now you got all my worldly goods, and you're the first woman I've ever said that to. But the Inland Revenue has no facilities for livestock. You tell the bailiffs if they want this truck, they'll have to come and get it. But just remind them I've got to survive an hard winter with notes, and I'm nearly an old age pensioner. Mr. Greengrass, this has to be done properly. <laughs> First thing to remember is that we are here to reassure the public. So panic must be avoided at all costs. Yorkshire farmers aren't noted for their panicking, sir. I'm sure they're not, Sergeant, but I think they might appreciate a more high-profile approach than usual. 
We now know that there's something on the moors, some sort of wild animal, probably of the feline variety. Did these children give a clear description? Not really, no. They heard noises and thought they saw something. Could have been a sheep. But we are talking about something pale. Something fast and pale. I have here a number of photographs of large cats. Pass them on. Lion. Lioness. Tiger. Leopard. And puma. You'll see that the lion is a fairly pale animal, although it does have a very distinctive mane. A lioness is a candidate. A lioness did escape from a private zoo in Penzance last year. We're a long way from Penzance, sir. It's just an example, Bellamy. You see, it's knowing the possible that leads us to understand the probable. Now, I think the tiger is an unlikely candidate because it's far too distinctive. And likewise, the leopard, which leaves us with the lioness and the puma. But the descriptions we have suggest something smaller than a lioness, which leaves the puma. So, we will need assistance from the firearms trained officer. Um, uh, you don't think this will cause more panic than reassurance, sir? We're already telling them to keep their children by and to bring in any stock they can from off the hills. I recognize that this is outside the scope of your experience, Sergeant, so uh, you best leave the planning to me. Now, the first thing we need to organize are night patrols all around the Aidensfield area. I'm sure I can rely on you to organize that, Sergeant, with a little help from the man on the ground, eh, Rowan? Stevie. Fine. It's going to be a wild night with you, then. I'm still feeling a bit low. Should have gone to see Doc Radcliffe. Women doctors are all right, you know, for, well, for women's stuff. It's just flu. I don't need a specialist. All right, keep your hair on. Cheers. Hope yours. Oh, great. Middlesbrough. Yup. Says he'll take two more. Cash up front. Tomorrow. He's going out again tonight. Oh, the brandy then. One last brandy. On prescription. She's perfectly polite and helpful. I just don't think she's being straight with me somehow. Well, it is her territory. Well, at least it was. You do take a bit of getting used to. Thank you very much. Radcliffe's OK, though. Fine. I've hardly seen him. Well, it's been busy. I've been lucky. You said this evening surgery was packed out. When did his wife die? A couple of years ago. Must have been tough on the kids. Well, it all sounds great. With all the facilities. Absolutely. And there really is room to build up a fully-fledged health centre with all the things that people should have access to. Nurses and health visitors, antenatal clinics. That's what we could be talking about in a few years' time. And what about Aidensfield? Aidensfield would be OK. I'm only good to be in Whitby two days a week. Well, the main thing I'm worried about is you being called out. 
and the distance. Look at last night. You can be sure I won't be stopping to pick up any stray cats. I'm worried about you. Your area is three times the size it was. You've got a far greater distance to cover than I have, and they haven't even guaranteed you a car yet. So what are we going to do? Worry a lot. Yeah. And watch out for rampaging pumas. Do you really have to go out tonight? Yeah, I'm afraid so. There's definitely something going on. But whether it is the beast of the moors... What? Well, Crossley gave an interview to the Gazette. That's what they're calling it. As for me, the beast of Whitby. All set then, Rowan. Dr. Rowan. Good evening, Mr. Crossley. every time we go out. I know. There's blood all over her. Try to get some corn. She's not a sheep dog, is it? Come on. So are you going to be out there all night? Most of it. You're very brave. Oh, don't make me laugh. I've got a bad lip. There's no doubt there I wouldn't run a mile if you said so much as boo at it. Yeah, well, that's not the information we have, Claude. I don't know. Well, you coppers are all the same, aren't you? Send three and four months. We're going to a dance. Good luck. I'll be thinking of you. All right. All right. Well, uh, best get on, then. Cha. <coughs> You're in a good mood again, Claude. Oh, it's the lilies of the field, George. There's not more beautiful than money can buy and the good Lord gives them for note. And I'm skipping, so get them in. <laughs> oh, give us a boss pie. She's nice. Gina. Wait. Right, lads, you know what to do. If you see a tiger or a leopard, or a puma, you arrest them. And if you do, I'll eat my cap. You won't need this, Ventress. So we Where's take uh, this section of moorland here. Yeah. We divide it into quadrants. Yes, Mr. Ditchley, yes. Uh, the quadrant being the basic yeah, yeah, patrol area. It's, it's defined okay. by the nearest roads. And then the Sir. quadrant itself is divided into... Sir, that's uh, Sam Ditchley up at Beck Farm. Something's been at his sheep. Right. Let's go. You be careful. Hmm. There it is, over there. Where? Top end of the field. Hang on, hang on. That's Alfred. Alfred? Yeah. That's Greengrass's dog. Got it. I said hold on. Alfred. The evidence against Mr. Greengrass's dog really leaves very little room for argument. What are you talking about? He'd run a mile if a sheep so much as barred at him. I accept that your dog has been of previous good character, Mr. Greengrass, as far as we know. It's Ditchley who ought to be in the docking tip, going around shooting his gun off and murdering swine. You've had your say, Mr. Greengrass, and we have listened. Even Constable Royal have expressed his surprise at Alfred's sudden viciousness. But he was at Beck Farm on the night in question. We've heard Mr. Ditchley's evidence. 
We've also heard evidence of an animal similar in colour to the dog in question being in the vicinity of other incidents. The coppers all thought it looked like some big cat. Does he look like a big cat? If you continue to interrupt, Mr Greengrass, I shall have you removed from the court. The evidence before us is clear enough. We have established that your dog had been absent from your place of abode for several nights. Despite some very dubious testimony on your part, this is a farming community. We have to take a tax on livestock very seriously indeed. I'm sure local farmers will be very impressed by the speed and efficiency of Inspector Crossley's operation. <coughs> After careful consideration, we're making an order under the Dogs Act, 1871, that the dog be destroyed. You touch one ear of his head and I'll have you. Next case. This is all down to you, isn't it, Blake? And you and your duck near me, boss. You can't grass. get at me, so you have to get at the dog. Green grass outside. Rowan, get rid of him. Oh, yeah. Give him the dirty <laughs> work to do. I'll get this off to the lab straight away. You should be feeling better by now. One minute I'm fine, the next I'm sweating like a pig. Stay at home, in bed. If you ring tomorrow, either I'll come round to Dr. Radcliffe. Don't mind either. Good. Well, Frostfeet just said if I wanted to wait till tomorrow, I'd see Dr. Radcliffe. I said I'd rather take my shirt off for you. I'd better see my next patient. That was the last one, Doctor. I'm in a bit of a rush. I'm going to the pictures, so... Don't worry, I'll look up. Right. Good night. Night. Hi. Hello. Don't know how you get through them so quickly, Kate. There doesn't seem to have been that many to get through. Well, I've certainly pulled the short straw. It was packed in here last night and this morning. I think I might start bussing them over to Aidensfield. That's me, hello, son. The evidence was heard, Rowan. The magistrates heard it. And they made their decision. You don't really believe it was Alfred? That dog's as big a villain as his owner. That's not an answer, Sarge. Maybe not. But Inspector Cross is happy with the outcome, and that's all that matters. Now, you put his back up. I'm telling the court that you had some doubts. So if I were you, Rowan, I'd leave it at that. Now, he knows he went over the top with his tigers and his leopards and his pumas, but he's sorted that out. We've yet to see if this sheep trouble really has stopped, Sarge. It has stopped for three days, which means it could have been Alfred savaging the sheep. He is a lurcher. 
Well, it's a bit hard on him if it does start up again. And what will he get? Posthumous pardon? Rowan. There is a time to be born, and there is a time to die. And there's a time to take on the brass. And there's a time to keep your head down. Understood. Sarge. Condemned dog didn't eat a hearty supper. The famous Phillips, eh? Means tonight's a good night to go out. All the shepherds tucked up with the papers. I suppose so. You're not still ill, are you? Not exactly. I'm not quite over it, though. He says he'll take four more carcasses if we can get them. At a fiver each. Well, let's see if we can leave it at four, eh? Eh? I don't want it going to Dizzy's head, you know. Some other dog's going to the chair for her. Come in. And send it all to the tax man. Money, furniture, the horse, the lot. Well, that must have pleased them. Mind you, they threatened to send the furniture back. And I've had a letter up. Under the circumstances, no bailiffs. Just three bob a week out of my dole money. I think you know why I'm here, Claude. What? Anything to do with this? Someone broke into Ashfordley Police Station earlier this evening and removed Alfred. Never. There's not many people queuing up to do that. No, well, perhaps he dug a tunnel. Look, we know you've got him here somewhere, but I have to tell you that Blaketon says he's going to throw the book at you. Yeah, what's new? Knowing it proven it's another matter, isn't it?
Good evening. Uh, do you mind if I take a look in the back of your van? They've both been taken into custody. I must say, I wouldn't mind a look at young Cameron. There's nothing to see. I might not see another case. What was it again? Looping ill. It's actually spread by sheep ticks. Not often transmitted to humans, but very painful when it is. Most people who work with sheep for a lifetime won't pick it up. Well, better get on with my calls. See you later. Bye. Bye, Christine. Dr. Ratcliffe. Hello. Could I have a word, Christine? Yes. Through here. Will you close the door, please? Very light surgery again. Mustn't complain. I'm not sure. When a new doctor joins a practice, there's always some prejudice to be overcome. Patients get used to certain faces, certain ways. They'd still rather come in when the doctor they know is on duty, or see the doctor they know at home. That's something we've got to deal with. But it wouldn't be helped by a receptionist who suggested that patients might prefer to leave it till their old doctor was in. And who cheerfully moved appointments around because she thought the cases might be better handled by the established doctor. And felt that the only suitable home visits for the new doctor were pregnant mothers and toddlers. I don't know what you're talking about, Dr. Rowan. I haven't mentioned anything to Dr. Radcliffe, of course. But I don't expect my next surgery to leave me with the morning off. Shall we start again? Doctor. I'll see the first patient now. Inspector Crosley, please. Sergeant Blaketon, Ashfordley Police. Oh, uh, Inspector. Uh, yes, I just thought I'd like to fill you in. Uh, regarding the sheep rustling. Ah, uh, that's right, I did say rustling. You see, certain events have come to light which have enabled us to ascertain exactly what did happen. Uh, no, sir. Alfred's been returned to its owner. Alfred. You know, the puma. I mean, the dog. Mr. Greengrass? It all depends who's asking. And this is your dog? Oh, well, he's a bit more than that, but yeah. I just thought you might like to know that your damn mongrel found his way onto two of my pedigree English setter bitches broke through a wire fence to do it as well. I threw a tin of emulsion over him the first time, but he still came back. Oh, you're the one, are you? You come to do the second coat? My dogs are worth a hell of a lot of money. Just give me one good reason why I shouldn't sue you. I've got no brass. That's not what I've heard. Really? Well, you missed the bus. You're a bit behind the times. Look, I should be suing you. You've had the services of my dog at Stood for Note. I mean, he's not just an ordinary sire, you know. He happens to be the beast of the moors. <laughs> <laughs> What's he going to do for a living now? I've got no idea. But whatever it is, I'll try not to catch him at it until he's back on his feet again. 